take rabbit here. So we can have a look at the um, Kingst logic analyzer LA1010. So let's get into it. So here we have the box, and this is pretty typical to most of these um, cheaper logic analyzers. So anyway, this um, has a USB connector on one end, and then on the other end it has the where you bring in in the signals, and it has some um, 16 channels. You can see here in the diagram. So 16 input channels, two ground connectors, and then two for pulse width modulation, and those are actually outputs. And then um, this has got some restrictions when it comes to sampling rates, so depending on what um, sampling rate you have, then you, it reduces the number of channels you can use. Um, also, this is um, a version that um, hasn't got any internal cache memory. So all the um, data that it brings in here has to go directly to the computer, so that can also restricts the, the speed with which it can operate. So when it comes to probe cables, so I actually got three of these. So they fan out like that, and then this goes into the connector. And um, one of the issues is with this connector is that it's actually not that difficult to sidestep it so that it actually doesn't hit pin one so you actually have to make sure you insert it so that you don't click it one sideways and then I'm, I've assumed that this black is the ground so you kind of insert it like that and don't do it like that you need to make sure that it ends up in the, in the first pin try to demonstrate it so I see you get a, when it's correct you actually get a gap there <laughs> and then um, if you count the signals then if you look at the diagram one two three four five six seven eight so that's like one side and then you hit ground and then there's one single pin left and that's the pulse width modulation And in addition to that, it has a provided a set of grabbers, which are <laughs> and they're not super good quality, but they, they'll they'll do the job. So they, always these caps come flying off. Whoa. And then the idea is that this here needs to plug into the end of the probe wire like that. And then you can actually use this to grab onto things. As I said, not super good quality, but ah, it'll work. So anyway, you get the um, software on a CD, but in my experience, it's usually the software that comes on the CDs that are quite out of date. So I actually put a link to the in the comments to the uh, manufacturer's site, and then you can actually uh, pick up the latest version of the software and when it comes to the documentation it's uh, somewhat out of date um, screenshots and descriptions in comparison to the latest software you can download from the site but I, I managed to use it anyway so it wasn't so much deviation though I can't really uh, get it um, this um, unit it's about um, hundred bucks hundred dollars now there's lots of other models um, and the more expensive ones have cache memory and more channels and higher sampling frequencies but uh, when it comes to this one could consider hobby level um, modules then um, they kind of top out around three four hundred US dollars so um, that's what you can expect to pay if you want to go to the high end of the hobby models. But anyway, I thought I'd um, show it in action, so let's have a look at that. 
I just set up a simple experimental circuit, so I've got an Arduino Mega here, and then here's the logic analyzer, and then I'm just taking over 16 digital signals. So let's have a look and see what it looks like in the software. So anyway, here we see all the. I made the window a bit smaller so that we can actually see something on the video, but you can actually get it to. Yeah, you can resize it to whatever size you want. But um, yeah, here we have all the channels, all the way down to 15, and then I just made it generate the Arduino Mega will just generate a signal so we can see triggering it. And um, basically, this uh, software it treats state and timing in the same display, so you actually don't have um, distinct functions for that. And the um, most important option here to choose is that you. Yeah, well, actually, if we <laughs> uh, you you can select the sampling right here, and I've taken 200 kilo samples at uh, 20 kilohertz. And you have various options, and um, these options are a bit, yeah, it depends on what box you have. So this software is generically for all the boxes they have, so so actually I found a little bit of inconsistency when it comes to selecting these options versus what your box can handle. Uh, and then after you dial those in, then you can um, select what kind of a logic you are investigating. So that's this option, so you have a, a drop down where you can actually see different you know, TTL, CMOS, CMOS variants and customize the selection for the um, voltage level for state transition. So on the side panel here, you know, kind of interactive display, so when you click on something, then you get the, uh, for example, in this information it tells what's the width uh, between those hours, what's the period, what's the duty cycle, and what's the frequency. And so a very quick way of looking at stuff and then you can um, actually add pulse counters for specific channels so it's like the rising edge channel zero and then um, yeah that's the total time the, the full time of the sample then you can add timing markers so here you click on it and then you can actually set it, so I want to analyze from there to here. So that gives you different information based on the time interval you've selected. And then here you have analysis options where you can actually then add in um, different um, interpretations, like if it's a bus, uh, SPI, I2C, or CAN, or other options. We'll have a look at that later. Anyway, let's do a simple example of triggering. So, um, in this system, you can only have one edge trigger. So, this is going up, and, and that one's basically going down. So, let's say that we want that one to be going down, and then we have this one in status high, and then in the signal status low and then we want to get it to sampling and we want to start it sampling when this occurs this event so let's trigger and it always takes um a little bit of history with it so it doesn't start exactly on but as you see here you have the zero time position, so this is where it triggered. So what we could do is just to visualize that a bit better is let's go down to here. Uh, that one low, that one high, that one down, and trigger it down here instead. So, and here we see the zero time point. I can't really scroll it up to the 
correct position. Now I can see that it started the sampling here at the zero point and then it's here and then it took a little bit of history with it. So that's how you set up the, um, the trigger event. That's just a few more details. You can also use this function here and this basically samples until the buffer gets full and then it just starts a new sampling again. Or you can actually go to this button here and then you can say you want to have a real time status. So then it um, shows what's the status of the um, channel real time. And um, I loaded a new test signal here, and this is basically it's trying, it's showing a glitch. And here you see that this signal goes high, and then basically the idea is that this signal here should stay stable, but it actually has a glitch in it. And, and this this logic analyzer hasn't got glitch detection; it's got glitch filtering, so you can actually filter out that um, annoying glitch. <laughs> Just the, basically the complete opposite of what engineers want to do with logic analyzers in general. But I thought it was kind of cool. So let's um. How long is that? And that is. 40, 720, so, oh wait, we can actually take the size of the glitch, and that's 2 milliseconds, so, go into the settings here, glitch filter, channel 1, and it's in, oh, you can't see the window. Oh, it seems like the glitch filtering is in number of samples. So it has to derivate time to samples. Because hmm. it's 200 kilo samples over the whole, whole area. No, oh, but wait, maybe I... No, you can't change the unit. Okay. Ten samples. I'll get back to you when I found the correct number of samples to get it to disappear. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now, now we've solved the glitch problem. You, you see, it doesn't exist anymore because we told the logic analyzer not to show it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just think this is hilarious because the. the, the, <laughs> the absolute opposite to um, the functionality I wants to have, but hey, I don't know, maybe they gave up with developing the glitch section on the on this low level logic analyzer and then they decided to put <laughs> glitch filtering instead. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> moving on. So anyway, once you've done your analysis, then you might actually want to save that for uh, programs to use, so you can go to the top menu here, and then you have functionality to <laughs> save the data, or you can export it into various formats. So I thought I'd show the pulse width modulation, so if you go into this here menu, and then you say more settings, then you can actually um, use an option called place um, this setting in the toolbar so then you actually get the pulse width modulation up here which makes it much easier to use and you have direct access to the actual frequency and duty cycle but I just thought I'd show that output on the scope so here's the pulse width modulation <laughs> not the cleanest digital signal I've seen but It'll work for digital circuits, but it's got some weird overflow here, and then when it hits ground, also it's going a little bit. And I don't think it's my scope probe um, calibration because I've just been using it, and it's has not been let's see DC coupling. So hey. What's up? <laughs> anyway, whatever. It'll, it'll suffice for 
digital circuits. It's not the best signal I've seen. So we have to set up a small experiment with um, yeah, the mega sending I2 I2C um, traffic, and uh, I set up my digital scope to trigger on um, address one. So it's it's done that. So it's showing the traffic, and this is the basic. This is a uh, I2C um, bus scanning software, so it, it just goes through various addresses looking for um, devices on the bus. So let's see what that um, looks like if we use the um, logic analyzer instead. So here I just connected it up to the logic analyzer. And let's see what kind of a graph it makes. So here we see some signals. So let's see. Ah, so it's 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 what it's doing is it's waiting for five seconds and then it starts querying addresses on the I2C. So let's swim in here. Okay, here we have some data. Yeah, I'm not really sure how to interpret this, but anyway, um, this is the clock and this is the data. And then it has actually one can probably read about these. It's put some marker points in here. These um, green ones and red ones, and and when you zoom out, then it has this um, section here. Set up read to that one. Acknowledge. So it's got certain amount of interpretation. And um, you could actually view this in different formats. You can even have an um, ASCII display of this traffic, and then you can actually save this also if you'd want to for further analysis into a separate file. So, anyway, that's what that looks like. And of course, to be able to r really and deeply understand this, then I should be more in into the internal details of I2C working. <laughs> but at least you can get the, um, the um, state format here. So might help debug certain things. So, anyway, just a few more comments. Um, the minimum allowed signal frequency and state capture accuracy, it's dependent on the sampling frequency. Um, so, um, you need to evaluate the signal you're going... Actually, should have some pre-information about the signal you're going to analyze. Um, because there are, like... Let's see what it say. Yeah, it's a bullet point. Um, the rule we should follow is the sampling rate must be five times more than the maximum frequency of the tested signal. And ten times is better. So that, of course, is why a faster um, logic analyzer is always better, <laughs> better than a slower one. Because it, um, it'll, if you have a slow logic analyzer, it'll limit your uh, maximum frequency you can actually analyze. And it will severely impact the accuracy of your state diagram and timing diagram. Uh, just wanted to mention the higher up you go in frequency, it's not only the actual um, logic analyzer, it's the, to a great extent, how you connect the logic analyzer to the circuit to be analyzed, so you don't um, actually skew the operation of the target system or you. Um, get incorrect measurements and that's uh, a lot to do with um, the impedance of the probe you're using and the probe setups and then um, to do with grounding and grounding can actually signal grounding um, for logic analysis can get actually very tricky if you have very high operational frequencies that you're trying to analyze so you spend a lot of time on the um, Oh, one could say setting up the um, environment for anal analysis so that you uh, actually uh, don't screw up the target system or don't get incorrect um, data. But anyway, I thought that was an overview. I didn't go through every single function and sub, -sub function that the uh, software provides because it would actually make too much of a long video. No, most of the functionality is quite easily, uh, you can quite easily find it by going to the same menus that I've already covered. And they work pr pr pretty much the same way. 
So anyway, I hope this was useful and um, yeah, see you in the next one.